Hello and welcome to another one of Enio Shade's Blender Tutorials. This time I'm going to be working on a request from a user, Paul102354. He's requested me to um, do a curtains tutorial. You know, like curtains open. So I'm going to do that now. Alright, so we aren't going to be using default cube today, so you can kill it. Just destroy it completely and utterly. Alright, now you're going to want to create a plane. Because this is what we use for our cloths. You want to scale it up a little bit. Whoops, wrong direction. And then you're going to want to uh, go into edit mode by pressing tab. Press W to go to the specials menu. And just press subdivide multi. Number of cuts, we're going to go for 20. Depending on how powerful your computer is, you might want to increase or decrease this number. Hmm. Eh, that's not very good. Control Z. Well, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do 30. Much better. Alright, now you're going to want to go down to this little button here for edit. You're going to press set smooth so it'll look good. And tab to exit edit mode. And now we're going to work on some rotation here. Well, you see... I have this very weird thing in the center of my plane. He oh, heavens help me, what is it? Well, it is the transform options. This is transform manipulator. Just, it's all of them. You press control space, and you can go to combo. It's the one I always use. It's the most useful. So just press this red one. Don't do any more. Just click it once and press 90. This will rotate it vertically, so now it can actually be a curtain sliding across. Now you're going to want to uh, move this to the side a little bit so it's, no, just a second, go to the front view, move it so it's about lined with the z-axis like that, the edge is lined with the z-axis. You're going to want to deselect it by pressing A, which is select, deselect all. Um, then you're going to want to select it again, press shift D, and then right click. What you just did was duplicate it, and uh, now there's an exact copy as you can see. And you just move that edge to the Z axis, like that. And now you have your curtains partially set up. Go back to front view, and you go add curve, brazier, curve, right there. Alright, now let's go back into top view. You can see this curve is oddly shaped, so we're going to have to change that. Go into edit mode, and you can manipulate the curve from here. Just go back to top mode, because we're only doing 2D edits, and you click that button. Or, well, not that button, that little dot there. You can't see anymore. And you move it down, so you make a fairly straight line. Like that. Alright, exit edit mode. And you have your wonderful random little path here. You move it back, you scale it up a bunch, so it can actually be a good, you know, rod, so to speak, for the curtain to move across. Make sure it's kind of aligned with one of your curtains. Well, will there be curtains? Get the scale up a little more. Move down. All right, there we go. That is good. Now you uh, duplicate it with Shift D. Move it over, just like you did with the other one, and click it right about there. Except this one, it's going to be moving in the opposite direction. So you got to back it, go up into top view. Click this orange ring here, which is the view aligned rotator, and then press 180. Now it's flipped around, and we can use it to move the other curtain in the opposite direction. Alright, now click on one of your curtains, and click on the path right above it by shift, right click. Now you've selected them both, and press control P. When you have, well, first you got to make sure, like, as you see when you have them both selected, one of them is at a pink outline, one of them is white outline. The one in the white outline is the active object. Make sure that the path is the active object. Now press control P, and go to follow path. Oh dear. Uh oh. That's wrong. Well, as it turns out, we're going to have to flip both those paths. So select this one. Click the orange. 180. There we go. And now you can see that little dotted line there is on the right side, so it'll actually move in that direction and not just go in that direction. That would be bad because then the curtains are going the opposite direction they do go in. And then go into top view again. 180. Flip the other one around. Oh, big mistake by me. I didn't think that through well enough. 
All right, then right click, shift, right click, same procedure, follow path, deselect all. Now these two paths, just right now, you'll just see the they move apart very like oddly. They're not physics at all. Oh no, help me, Mr. Enial Shade. I will. Now you go here to one of these guys, and you're in a good view, front view. Go into tab for edit mode. Now I don't know why I duplicated, didn't duplicate this later, but you know. I'm a human being, I make mistakes. Alright, deselect all. Go down here, make sure you're on vertex select, and press the B key. This will allow for box select. Now drag it over the top vertices nearest to your oh so powerful path. Now, once you have them selected, press the new key down here. As long as you're in the edit editing thing, just press F9 to make sure. And press new. This is under vertex groups. And call it top edge. Now we're going to use this to make it stiff along here and actually have it look like a curtain. Now you want to want to press tab to exit edit mode and then select this one. Go tab end to edit mode. Press B box select. Select all the top vertices. Go down same procedure. Top edge. Assign. There. Now we have our top edges defined and we can do our physics now. Go in here. Make sure you're on the physics tab. It's the middle one, with the bouncing ball. Go down to cloth, press cloth, cotton's good. Now here it is, pinning of cloth. Click it, and top edge, pin stiffness, just click and drag all the way. Do the same for the other one. Pinning of cloth, top edge, click and drag all the way. All right, now we should have two curtains that pull across. Oh, wait a second here. We gotta move these guys so they actually are right there and right there. Okay, very good. Now we have our curtain. And we can just press the one of them and go to collision and press bake. And they get pulled away. They stop. Flop like real curtains would. We wait for the animation to be done. Only 250 frames, that's a good length. You can actually see them, you know, dangling and waving in the no wind so I couldn't say that alright now you're done with baking the animation and you can watch it just press alt a woohoo awesome looking curtains well that is basically all there is to making curtains in blender you can go a lot more advanced than this um, that was just a real quick example of what you can do you see they move quite nicely you can do like ripples in the curtains I, I'm not quite sure how you do that in manually I'm not that great at modeling, so you'd have to talk to someone who actually knows some a thing or two about modeling. But as you can see, they go across quite fine. Just do whatever you want with this, you know, make it better. Bigger curtains, taller curtains, put a texture on them. You can go quite in depth with it. Well, that's basically all I have to tell you. Thank you very much for posting, Paul102354. And I will see you on my next tutorial. Bye.